Thank you for joining me on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips, and I got a good one here for you today. By request, by request, arrows and broadheads, the magic combos. What is going to work the best out of your bow? Okay, now there are no two bows alike, no two are cut alike, no two shoot alike. But there are general formulas that you can start with and take it from there to find that magic arrow that's going to perform flawlessly. Okay, guys, I'm gonna show you today what I use, what works for my bows. Now, it doesn't mean that it's gonna work for everyone else's because every bow is different. And you have to remember, guys, a recurve does not shoot like a long bow. No, it does not. A recurve stores more energy. It'll shoot a stiffer shaft. You generally can shoot a little bit more weight uh, you can shoot a little heavier FOC. A longbow, on the other hand, is ultra smooth and forgiving. They just don't have as much power in the limbs. So you have to find the shaft that is going to work out of that bow. Now, before you go playing with broadheads, guys, don't even go down that road. Don't even put yourself in that position and waste money until you have bare shaft tuned your setup. That's right. Bear shafting, uh, guys, I know that there's there's so much out there on bear shaft tuning, and sometimes it's complete overkill. It is complete overkill in a lot of cases in traditional archery. It is. But there is a reason for it, and I personally do it. Yes, I do. Why do I do it? Because I know that if I have a poorly tuned arrow, if my arrows are very poorly tuned, if they are not flying straight, in other words, if they are flying through the air sideways, okay guys, if that arrow leaves your bow and it is flying sideways to the target with a fair shaft, don't think it's gonna fly ahead because it will not. It will not shoot consistent, guys. The broadheads magnify the problem, okay? So you have to bear shaft tune your arrows within reason. And I mean generally good. They don't have to be perfect. Don't, don't spend weeks and weeks and weeks trying to just get them absolutely flawless because you, the shooter, are the cause for so much of the erratic flight. Yes, you are. Your release hand, how you grip that string, how you release that string. So many factors are involved. Now, I personally have a hooter shooter. I have a homemade hooter shooter that I built that will shoot just like compounds. It will crank to 28 inches or whatever the draw length is, and it will actually shoot arrows with a mechanical release that is flawless, okay? That's just something I built. You can look them up, they're DIY. You, they're, they're all over the internet. You can build them out of a sawhorse and a two by eight and, and a winch, guys, you, in a strap. You, you, they're so easy, okay? But you don't have to go to those extremes. You just have to bear shaft tune your bow, shooting completely vertical at least 15 yards from the target, okay? Because you want your arrow to react to how you shoot. In other words, how you catch your bow, how you release the arrow, everything has an impact on that. But guys, get your arrows shooting straight, okay? Get the right spine that has the right amount of flex, the right paradox for what point weight you're running, that that shaft will shoot straight and enter your target straight, not tail right or not tail left, not tail high, not tail low. These adjustments are easily fixed with the knock height, generally if the bow is tillered correctly. Your right and left is the easiest part because a tail right is a stiff shaft. A tail left is a weak shaft, easily corrected by tweaking the length of the shaft and the point weight, guys, okay. And with some brands of arrows, you have to actually knock tune. You have to turn the knock, sometimes 180 degrees, to find where the seam is on that shaft for it to shoot out of your bow. In other words, it's a little stronger and a little weaker depending on how it's turned. Play with your arrows. See what it takes for them to shoot good, okay? Then you are ready to shoot broadheads. Now, I'm going to show you guys what I shoot, and I'll shoot a couple of them. My typical setups, and I have learned through experience hunting what it takes to kill deer and what is overkill, what you don't have to do, okay? So, trying to save you some money here because all of this stuff is expensive, guys. Now, 
this particular arrow that I'm holding in my hand, this is a 600 spine with a 150 grain Magnus Stinger buzz cut on it. This arrow only weighs probably 400 grains, okay? But this is a magic arrow to shoot out of a 38 to 40 pound bow. This thing is awesome. That's plenty to shoot out of that. As long as you have at least 400 grains, you can kill deer, okay? With a well-placed shot. That's where it is, well-placed shot and a razor sharp broadhead, guys. But most of my bows are between 43 and 50 pounds. Most of them are. Now, I'll show you something that makes a world of difference. When guys message me and they say, Jeff, what spine arrow do I need to run? 600s, 500s, 400s, or what? I'm like, okay. Well, first of all, how long are your arrows cut? What's your true draw length? How many pounds are you truly drawing? You have to figure that stuff out to know what you're dealing with first. Then the question of what kind of bow do you have? How is your shelf cut? Is it cut to center? Is it not cut to center? Is it cut past center? Let me show you guys what I mean. Take, take this recurve. This recurve is cut a 16th past center. That means this bow will actually shoot a multitude of arrows. It'll shoot about anything you want to load in it and tune. It really will. The best shooting arrow, and it's a 45 at 28, and I draw 27 inches. So I'm about 43 pounds with this bow. Center shot means if you look down the string, if you line everything up perfectly, and you look down the string, looking at this bow, this arrow is not even hardly out to the left at all. It's almost straight out of the bow because it is cut past center. Whereas other bows, like my other long bows, they are cut to center, which means that arrow has to flex around that riser just a little bit more. So you want to shoot a slightly weaker shaft, meaning you run a little bit more point weight on them to make them tune in the same spine. That's how I set up arrows for all of these bows. Now, when it comes to arrows, guys, I'm just going to tell you, people ask me all the time, nonstop, what arrow do you recommend? If I had to choose one arrow, one arrow, if I just had to choose one to build and hunt with and shoot 3D and do everything, if I could only have one arrow, this is what it would be, guys. Right here. Right here. I have, I have messaged more people than I can possibly count recommending these arrows. And I have no affiliation with Gold Tip. I am not a Gold Tip dealer. I just love them. What's good is good, guys. The Hunter XT is the middle of the road arrow, okay? And you can only go down to a 500 spine in these. They don't build 600s in them. However, if you need a 600, the Warrior. You can get Warriors in a 600, okay? Same arrow, same exact thing. It's Gold Tips Economy line, but it is the identical arrow, and they're only like $5 and change a piece, okay? And they shoot amazing. They're super tough arrows. They're great, great arrows. I like the XTs because they have a little slicker coating on them, okay? And they only weigh 7.4 grains per inch in a 500. That's what I'm getting at, guys, a light, light shaft with good foc like this particular setup here is 240 grains on the front of this arrow total arrow weight 480 grains that's what this shaft weighs this is a 50 grain insert that's a 50 grain aluminum insert that's what i'm running in here 50 grain aluminum insert right here with a 190 grain Swamp Shark. That's a 190 grain Swamp Shark. I've got one right here with a 100 grain brass insert on it. If you really want to go heavyweight, uh, like if you're shooting 400s and you want to push that 300 grains up front and you can do it, say, out of a 50 pound bow, that will do some business. I promise you guys, they're bad. But out of most of my 45 pound bows, 45, 46, 47, 48 pound bows. I am shooting 
upper 400s to low 500s, anywhere from 480 to 530. That's about the weight range, total arrow build weight that I am shooting. And most of the time that includes a Luminoc, which is about 25 grains. That's my choice. That's what I shoot. I don't see a need to go past that because I don't want to give up trajectory at 30 yards, okay? I want a relatively flat shooting arrow that flies a broadhead exceptionally well. And I have found that a lighter shaft with good FOC, and I'm sorry, I mean, when I say good FOC, 20% plus, that's where you need to be. You need at least 200 grains on the front of any arrow. I don't really like going less than that. And I would say 175 would be the bare minimum that I would go, but, and I'm talking total point weight whatever shaft you're running, but I recommend shooting about 200 grains on the front of an arrow, and guys, they fly them like magic. They do, because the arrows pull. They don't push, they pull through the air. When you shoot a light shaft in a heavier FOC, point and insert, somewhere around the 200 to 250 mark, the arrows just fly amazing, and they penetrate like crazy. Accuracy is key with broadheads, and that's why I set mine up the way I do. Now, I'll show you something else I got. Each bow has its own preference of what it wants. For example, this 45 pounder that I showed you loves a gold tip, whether it's a Warrior, a Hunter XT, a Hunter Pro, a traditional doesn't matter. It loves a 500 with about 250 grains on the front. This bowl loves that kind of weight. Now, this carbon vapor here. This carbon vapor is 44 at 28. Okay, so that means I'm only drawing maybe 42 pounds on it. 42 pounds, give or take. I have found that a 190 grain broadhead with a stock insert on a 600, this here is a legacy shaft, a 600 with a 190 grain head is bullet. Shoots so incredibly well, I love it. Great hunting setup for this bow if this is the one that I wanted to hunt with. Now, let me show you this. This Passion double carbon little re uh, longbow, this one piece, is 48 pounds at 28 inches. Okay, so I'm drawing about 46 pounds. Okay, I am shooting dark timbers out of this one. Big Jim's arrows. Dark timbers in a 500, okay? With the 50 grain brass inserts. Now you can get them with 100s or 50s. I'm shooting the 50 grain with the 190 grain heads on these. They shoot amazing. I'll show you something else that shoots good out of it that weighs more, but I don't see a need in it, okay? I have a 400 gold tip traditional. Good old gold tip traditional in a 400 running a 300 grain setup. It's actually 290. This is a 190 grain head. This is a tree shark with a 100 grain steel insert. I have a stainless steel 100 grain insert in this arrow. So this is 290 grains on the front of a 400. This arrow is pushing the 600 grain mark, okay? 600 grain mark. Shoots amazing, but it'll drop at about 25 yards. It will start its drop, whereas these dark timbers do not that are weighing in at about 525 grains, maybe 530. They are not dropping, and that's why I shoot them, okay? And their penetration is about equal, all right? So you don't have to go super heavy and lose your trajectory. Now, if you're shooting 50 pounds or more and you really want to devastate a deer, shoot a 600 grain arrow, okay? But if you're in that 40 to 45, 46, seven pound range, there's not a lot of need of exceeding 500 grains in an arrow. There's just not a lot of, of need in it. It's gonna do what you want to do. I'll shoot these a couple of times for you guys and just show you what I mean. Show you how perfect broadhead flight, when you have bare shafted, 
your arrows to your bow, to every bow you have, and even if it's only one bow, when you have bear shaft tuned them and you find out what that bow likes, then you could shoot any broadhead you want to put on it. Real, you can. And I say that, guys, because if you can shoot a tree shark or a swamp shark, something with this much cutting diameter, most of the time they would plane the arrow, correct? You'd think, well, this is gonna steer the arrow right or left. No, they do not steer them if this thing is bear shaft tuned. If this arrow is flying true, these broadheads do not magnify any problems. They fly great. But if you don't, they will, okay? I'll shoot this one for you right quick and just show you. I got the old wolf target out here at 20 yards. And I'll show you guys how good these things fly. Check this out. That is as perfect kill shot as it can possibly be. It cannot be any better than that. That arrow flew flawless, completely flawless. Why? Because I bear chef tuned them. They will fly any head that I screw on them. And it doesn't matter what head it is, honestly. But I will tell you guys, Simmons heads fly as good as anything on the market and they have got a cut second to none. If you want to put something down quick, and I mean really, really put them down quick and have confidence when you go to the woods, get you some sharks and break out the jewel stick. I did a video on how to sharpen them really quick, guys, and it's, it's super easy, but I love them. They were good to me this last year. They were. But on the same token, you take, you take like, let's say you're a guy shooting 40 to 42 pounds and you're gonna go to a 600 with a big head like this too. You know, you're right at 200 grains. With insert and all, call it 200 grains. With a 190 grain head and say a 10 grain insert, that's 200 grains point weight on the front of a 600. They shoot amazing out of the lighter pound bows, guys. They do. They fly incredible. Check this out. Perfect flight, perfect flight. And I am not gonna try to hit my other arrows that's right beside it, but I ain't trying to tear up an arrow here. And you gotta be cool shooting broadheads cause you will. But that thing had literally no wiggle, no anything, it was just spinning. You could actually see the feathers just turning through the air on that left helical, it was awesome. See, that's all you need for a light pound bow. It's all you need. That thing's gonna kill anything that you want to. And of course, with my recurve. A recurve has a little more energy, even at lighter pounds, than most longbows do. They just do. 500 gold tip warrior, 190 grain swamp shark, 50 grain insert. So that's 240 grains on the front of this arrow, right? The flight is phenomenal. It really is, guys. The flight is so good out of this boat. They don't get any better than that. There's no, no kick, no wiggle, no anything. I mean, they just do not get any better than that, guys. I promise you they don't. Now, I'm going to shoot this heavy arrow, this 600 grain arrow. I'm going to shoot it out of this longbow because it is a little more, a little more weight. This is a 48 pound bow. Okay. I'll shoot this heavier arrow with 300 grains on the front and show you guys how this thing flies. Hope I don't hit one of my other arrows. Perfect flight. It's right there beside them, but it flew absolutely perfect. Was it a hair slower than the dark timbers? Yes, because it weighs a little bit more, okay? So the more weight you get on your arrow, you're gonna give up just a little bit of speed, guys. You're going to, there's no way that you can get around it, but you also get a little bit quieter shot. And that's key, guys. Having a quiet bow is more important than anything. So hopefully this has helped you a little bit on matching up your arrows to your bow and guys, I want you to send me your questions. Send me your comments. I'll do my best to get with you and answer any questions that you have with your setup. If you say, hey, Jeff, I've got a so-and-so bow 
This is what I draw. This is what pounds I'm drawing. This is how long my arrows are. What spine should I go with? What weight inserts? What weight broadheads? Kind of where do I need to go? Guys, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. And it's only from tinkering with these bows all these years, playing with every kind of arrow pretty much on the market and broadhead combination and insert combos and, and all that. And guys, there's so much stuff that you can do. There's so much you can do. But remember, you got to bear shaft it first. You got to get that shaft flying straight before you put a broadhead on it. And then you're good to go. Good to go, guys. So thank you for joining me on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips. I love you guys. And I appreciate you joining me today. If you have not subscribed, hit the button. Go ahead and hit the button and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. Got a lot of new stuff coming. Um, as I mentioned before, we're just getting out of the spring 3D season, going into the summer. So we're closing in on hunting season. So most of these videos are going to be geared toward your hunting setup. We're going to deal with all kinds of things pertaining to getting your hunting bow set up and getting ready to go to the woods, guys. And I got a lot of cool stuff I'm going to show you. What works and what does not work. Thank you guys and God bless. Goodbye.